Hello, this is Christian. In this episode, we're going to look at web forms in Laravel. Mainly, we want to do some just the service side form validation and how to set up a form. Okay, so first thing is that um, we need to go and in here, we're going to just use the uh, forms which we created for the contact page right here. Okay, so this is a really simple form that has three fields and we want to process this form and then, you know, send it back end. So I'm going to open this also in the routes page, I'm going to open up the web PHP and it's going to go into this contact page right here. So this is where I'm going to clean up this a little bit. Okay, I'm going to remove this thing here. It makes it a little bit um, too messy to look at. I'm going to do a format to clean this up a little bit. All right. Now, let's move this down a little bit. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another route here to process a post request, okay? So I'm gonna copy this and put it right below it. We'll make this as a post. Now, the first thing you wanna do is that if you are submitting form to the backend, you need to be able to retrieve the data from the form. And you do that by doing something called the dependency injection. This is a really early, early stage in dependency injection or DI for that matter. So what we'll do is we need to inject a request object to this function here, right? So, uh, you know, as far as I know, like since PHP 5 or 7, you can actually do using type hint to allow certain type to inject to a function. So we're gonna use a request class in here. If you type that in here, uppercase R member, you're going to get that from the HTTP, um, from the support um, HTTP client, okay? So make sure you hit that. And on the very top here, you're going to see um, HTTP request. If you don't see that, you probably grab the wrong one. So make sure you grab the right one for that, and then it will go ahead. And then we need to add an object called request. This is just a variable called request. You can call whatever you want. It could be A, B, C, doesn't matter. This is not so important. What's important is this type here. Okay, so now when we load the form using the post method, it's going to load this as opposed to this. I'm going to use the same URL. Okay, you can make it differently if you want to. I'll use the same URL, but the content here will be different. And then when I submit the form, go to this page, I'm not going to return the user back to the same view. I'm going to go to a different view. Let's say we call this just a thank you view, okay? So thank you. And uh, I'm going to create a, um, a view just a minute. So if we hit thank you. And then we're going to um, create a very simple view. Maybe just copy the one that we have. Uh, contact is okay. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, copy that. Then paste it right back and rename it to say thank you dot blade dot php. And then here we're going to just put a message in here um, to say uh, thank you. Uh, let's put it into a p tag. Thank you. And then put the name right here. So wherever this is, we're going to put the name in here. Um, and, and you can put whatever message you want to put in here. It doesn't really matter. You can say something like, thank you for um, received your message and we'll be in touch. Something like that, okay? So we know that it's, it's the user and a very simple form. Okay, so save that form there. Now back here, I think we are almost done. Now, so let's go to the form first. I want to show you something here um, that when you submit forms using Laravel, by default, the Laravel engine requires you to include something what's called a CS, um, CSRF token. What that is, is really just a token, um, which is called, um, let, me, let me go right here, okay? I'll put it right here. You need to include that in the form. Okay, so it's really the app symbol followed by CSRF. Now, this is a token that will be generated by Laravel to prevent your form from being submitted from a different site. Okay, um, you know, because a user can create these forms in any site they want and they can direct that to action to your site, right? They can put like HTTP here and then your site something.com and then whatever the form is, 
okay? Very dangerous sometimes. So you want to prevent that from happening and only this form that is submitted from your server, from your site will be allowed. And that is what this CSRF is for, okay? It's to prevent the exploitation of unauthorized commands or form submissions from a robot or from another user or from a hacker for that sort, okay? So it's just a security layer, really important. And you can turn this off if you want to, but I highly recommend that too. Okay, so this one here is gonna go back to the same page, which is the contact page, right? And then the method is gonna be a post as opposed to the default of get. Okay, um, everything here should be the same. We'll leave it as is. And I'll show you without this one here. Let me turn this off. Okay, if I save that. And now if you go and launch the application, make sure you run that first. Sure. Again, a port 8000 and go to the site and refresh it. Okay, so here's a form here. Okay, so notice I did not have the CRF install. If you go into the sort of view, you can see there's no token here. I'll leave this open for now. And if you try to submit your form without nothing, I didn't require anything here, so I submit. You're gonna get an error or something like this. It says page expired. Why? Because of the token, right? So the token actually generates a session uh, that is managed by Laravel. So if the session or token is not matched, it, it expired that form data. And so therefore it does not accept any form coming into your site. Okay, very, very, very uh, useful. Um, it, it, an example to do that is uh, you can send any form to Google and Google will take it, right? Um, so uh, that's something that you wanna think about. So now if I turn this on like that, okay, and save it and go back and try to resubmit it again and just click okay. And you'll see that, um, uh, let's see, probably didn't do something correctly. Let's try again and submit. Okay, so you can see that it goes, it did work, except I didn't include the name here because of the form I submitted to the thank you right here. I didn't include it, right? So it does work now, which is good. So let's go and fill up our form for the, I'm gonna close this down here. Go to the thank you, this is good. In the URL here, we go to the thank you here. We need to include the variable for the name as well. So the name here is going to be mapped to a variable called name. And we will get that name from the request. Okay, so the, the form data comes in, it's going to be attached to the request object. This is an object, by the way. And so it has all the fields attached to it. I have three fields. So you can just grab the name. It will create a variable called name. And it's going to be assigned with a value coming from the request. And request here is an object, so you can use um, the arrow method to get the name of your field. Okay, the name here is the field of your form. I have the name field, email, and message, right? Either one of those will, will should be here. So I just want to get the name, then I'll do that. And then I pass that to the form, and that should be okay. So let's go back to the browser and refresh. If just refresh, it should still take it, but there's no name attached. So it's empty really, okay? So now if I go back again, now I put my name here and I will leave the rest blank. I didn't require that. So you can see that I pass the name over and it goes to the thank you page. Again, the URL is still the same, right? Even though it, the same URL, I can load a different view if I want to, which is pretty nice, right? Okay, so you can see that how that works. Now, the next thing I wanna do is, um, I want to validate these fields here. I'm just really simple validation. You can do front end validation using HTML, like the require and all those stuff. You can also use JavaScript. Both of those are front end validation, which are re usually really good to do. And then you have another layer on the back end, which is the server side validation. So I'm gonna do just the server side, the front end, I'll leave that to you, you already know how. But let's say we're gonna require all three fields and then email should be an email of that email type. Okay, now I do want to point out here and their um, documentation on the Laravel site. If you go to this link here under the validation and the word towards like the middle of the way here, you have a rules of validation for all your different types of fields. So there's a lot of them here for date, um, you know, whatever it is. Um, we're going to do one for the email. So if you click email, you're going to do something like this. Um, maybe just the email and then very simple here. I'm not gonna do too much about it. 
Um, okay, so all the rules are here if you want to look into that further. So let's go back to our code and validate this form. So again, I'm not going to touch anything in the front end, okay? I manage everything in the back end. So back here, when the data comes in, okay, <clears throat> before I submit, you know, assign this data, I want to make sure they're required. Now to do that, you can call the request and then request has a function called a validate, okay? This function will run if you run this first. If this validation uh, fails, then all of these here will not, this data will not be set. It will, by default, it will redirect the user back to the same view where they came from, wherever that site is. Not only that, it will also let you display some error messages, okay? So the, what do you validate here? Inside here is an array or a list of all the fields you want to validate. I have only three fields. The first field is called a name. So I want that name to be uh, validated using some key terms in here. One of these is called the required, okay? Just like that in like HTML. I want that to be required. I'm gonna do a control, I mean, alt, uh, alt shift down just to copy that down. Email is also required and the message is also required. But the email also want to include the type of email. So you put the type symbol like that, you make it so that it's email, okay? It will validate that make sure it's an email format. Um, there are other rules, you know, number of characters, uh, the minimum, maximum, lowercase, uppercase, all the stuff again is in the URL I mentioned earlier. Okay, so what this one does is it will run this function and validate that for you. If it passes all the validation are required, then it's good to go. And then it will proceed down here and then go back to the thank you page. All right. Now, this function here returns an object. Um, well, I'm not object, actually an array of this, whatever you included here, okay, in three fields. So you can do that by setting to another. Um, you know, call it data, what do you call it, validate data, doesn't matter what you call it, form data, okay? And then now once it's been uh, validated, the data here contains all these data you set from the form field, which is the same as the request. So it's kind of duplicated. Only difference is that this is an array, this is an object. What is the difference? Well, quite a lot. So for example, an object notation, I can do one of these. Okay, let me duplicate this again. You can use the arrow, right, like that. You can use the uh, array method, which is this bracket, or you can use a function called get. You get the name, so a getter, okay? So these three options are available for the request uh, object, whereas the data here is just an array name. So you have to use this method here. Okay, so highly up to you which one to use it. Um, so I'm just to make sure it does work and, and, and these and these should should work. Um, okay. So now once we validate it, if you don't intend to use the data, you don't have to set it here. You can just leave a blank, you know, request and, and be done with it. Um, but I just want to show you that you know these should work as well. All right. Now let's go and give this a test drive. Now they are all required. If you do reload the page. If you try to submit it, right? Notice it doesn't load because we didn't put any error messages. Um, if I type in something here like that, okay? How do we know that it's gonna show any messages? We don't know because we didn't include the, the error messages. So let's fix the error messages first so we can see what's going on. Now, when you create uh, this validation, once you require it, what happens when the scene is that it includes an errors variable. This errors variable is available in the view. So all your views will have this error variable. If you go out here to the play page here, you can display the error messages um, you know, to the view. And that is a, uh, a, an instant, I mean, the errors message. So it would look something like this right here. Um, maybe you call it div here. Okay, and then we can put a class here for like um, alert and then alert uh, using, mixing with um, bootstrap here, okay? 
And we'll put here a list of messages. So UL, you know what, let me do this, UL, and then here I have a bunch of allies, right? And you can use a loop to go through each of the error messages. So it's again error. And this error here has uh, a function to get all or, or get all of them. And the error goes actually goes into a, um, actually it's an instance of, if I remember correctly, let's see, if you go to the uh, web, what is it at? The vendor, I'll show you really quick vendor, uh, the Laravel framework, we've seen this before, SRC under the Illuminate, there is a, um, a support function, I mean, class folder. In here is a message bag class, okay? This message bag, you can see, has a lot of functions that actually capture all the type of error you can see. If I go and open the outline here, you can see a little bit better. And let me collapse these. Okay, so you can see here that you can get the error messages uh, from if it has any a particular type of error message, if it has any error message, the first message, get a particular type of message, um, you get all the messages, it will give you a count. Um, all or another way is any here, if it has any messages, it will return a count if it's greater than zero. And, you know, so, so use this to check your information, your, your data. So back here on the um, contact page, I can say if all the error messages return as, this is called the error, for each type of error, right? And make sure we end here. I'm gonna go and put the end. Okay, so inside here, yeah, I wanna display the error messages. Whatever they are will be displayed here. All right, so if I save this and go to the browser, refresh the page. Um, error, okay, I think uh, it's called errors, not error, I should be plural. Uh, errors, yeah, errors and not error. Okay, so refresh this again. Remember I already submitted earlier, um, well, I lost my data, but you see this box here, right? This is what error messages is. But if I go to about, come back again, the box is here. I only wanna show when the error is triggered, but I wanna show you that if I type something like this, hit submit, you can see that the error is here. It says the email is invalid. And I don't include everything, it should have all three messages. Okay, so again, I only wanna show if I have any error. So you can do that by using another um, clause, which is the if, right? Only show this box right above here. If the errors of any is true, right? If it has any, then go ahead and show the error messages. Otherwise, don't show it. Okay, let me go ahead and put this like that. And then now it's much nicer and refresh the page again. If I go back, you see that it's not there until I submit that and has the error messages. Great. So now again, we go here for something here, um, chr.com and then test and submit. And there it is. All right, perfect. The last thing I want to do is sessions. Okay, it's really important to us as well as we move forward into doing, um, you know, uh, collaborations. So let's say that I once I contact send us contact form. I want to add the name to the message up here instead of saying guest. It should say welcome Christian or whoever that name is. Okay, so we do that really quickly. Now session is quite simple in PHP. If you know that already, it's also very simple in Blade. Um, it's almost the same, same method here. So let's say that once I submitted the form and everything once has been validated, I get the name already field, and then I want to pass that to a session variable. So in here, you can also use the global session if you want to, if you do the PHP method like, like that, right? Remember that one? Um, that, that's okay too. If you do that, you have to go and turn on the session and things like that. Or you can use the Laravel method, which is also called the session function. Like that. And it's, this is available globally. You can pass in here as a key value pair, as an array that looks like this. And the key is gonna be, I call it name, uh, user or username, doesn't matter. 
as a map to the main here. Okay, so I set the session from here on. So after this, the session is active. And how do we treat the name back? You just put a session function followed by the key. So let's say I set a session, and then now I'm gonna go to the partial view of navigation here and right in here, instead of saying guest, I want to load my name or whatever name is. So you can do an if and else block above you or anywhere else, but you can use a shortcut as well, just by going here and do the, um, you know, the add symbol so in here like that. I'll do something like um, if the session of the name, I call you the so name I use your user, user, right? I call it user. Uh, yeah, user. So if the user exists, if that is true, then go ahead and load the session of the user, right? Otherwise, load the word guest. Okay. Um, yeah, that should do it, right? Well, let's go back to the browser and refresh our page. And if I reload it, it should change this to say Christian because I already set the form to, well, yeah, to that already. All right. So here we go. And if I go and do something like um, uh, Jake or something, j at j.com, uh, test, and now it changes to Jake. Okay, very cool. Now, the last thing I wanna do is how do you get rid of these sessions here, right? Um, a couple of ways to do it, but the easier way to do in, in Laravel is you can go into the storage here, the storage under the, uh, I think the app no, framework, under the sessions, you can see these sessions here. If you load your page, it keeps a track of your session. So you can see here is a session user here has a, has a name Jake here. And this is for the other one as well. If you want to delete your session and install all over again, you can just basically delete these. Just, you know, delete them and just say yes to uh, remove all the sessions. Um, yeah, so let's do that too. Okay, so now if we go back and that should have been removed from the sessions, right? That's one way. Another way is you can create another route. Let's say that I wanna to go to a route called C and I wanna clear the session for whatever that reason is, okay? So very simple to do in here. Um, you don't need to create a view at all, just a route. So let's go here and say, I wanna create a route that will go to um, uh, yeah, so a get of the set clear for session and the function here would be to clear the session. So you do that by calling the session class and then colon colon flush. If you do if you call the flush, it will clear the session for you. Now the session here, as you can see, is not available because you need to import that in. And you can import that by going to again, if you mouse over this, click on it, control space bar. And you want to get from the um, the facade, I think, okay, from the support facades here. Click that, and make sure it's a session and not session on, and it should be imported on the right top here. You can see right here. Okay, so that is another way to clear your session, your cache, uh, as well. Flush all of them. If you want to flush a certain type, you can use a different method, but this is what do all of them. Okay, so let's say if I go back again and create my form, right. No, no flash, no uh, session here. Go and type it again. So session is on again. You can see here. Now once it's on, even though the only way is you can you can actually um, close the browser, come back, it will still be there. But if I go to the slash c to clear the cache, right, and it's there. I did not redirect the user. I should have redirected the user back to the home page. But now you can see that if I load it is now gone, okay? So let's fix that really quick and then we'll be done with this video. So once I flush the uh, sessions, I'm going to return a redirect to the home page. right? Remember how we do that in the previous video? Redirect, if I spell that correctly. Okay, so save that. And then just do one more. If I go and do a C and then redirect to the home page. Okay, so that is it for this one. Again, when uh, in the future video, when we do crowd operations, we're gonna create a little bit more complex form, not that complex, but maybe to perform some of these portfolio objects and you have to add, delete, and, and things like that. All right, any questions, please let me know. I'll see you guys in the next video.